Hello everyone, Reggie Tam here, and we've got 11 hands of 16 NL Zoom to review. I played a, whatever it was, three, four thousand hand day of Zoom today, 16 NL Zoom over two and a, I'll say three sessions, it's two and a half really, one of them wasn't very long, and it was only two tabling to begin with, and I ended up playing four tables just for this, well, for the sake of volume, for the lack of boredom, etc. Um, it's everything that I advise people not to do. It's playing Zoom, it's four tabling, etc. But um, it's good for content and it's it's good practice now and then. Um, if I think my game's going a bit soft or what have you, or I try a few things out with slightly lower stakes, um, it, it's a good way. It's a good it's a good training tool, isn't it? It's not something I want to do all the time. I don't think um, today's gone pretty well. To be fair. Um, so I've enjoyed it today tomorrow could be if we do it again tomorrow which I don't think I will but if we do I could end up losing quite a bit and just think fucking hell fucking hate zoom again so I'm not going to get carried away but it was um, it was a fun day I've enjoyed it I've put, managed to put over 3,000 hands in so um, yeah it must have been doing something right today uh, so yeah please don't forget to hit like share subscribe all of those things join the facebook group as long as you're not going to come in and be a massive cunt and um yeah let's just go and look at the hands some of these could be dead boring i've not looked at any of them back they could be super standard i hope they're not i've tried to pick some ones um that seemed interesting at the time i just marked hands for the view as i was playing um some of them might end up being quite dull who knows but let's see setting off here with a true Reggie time hand, pocket kings. We're probably going to see quite a lot of good hands, I would imagine. Um, unknown player opens from the cutoff, 2.5x. We three bet to whatever that is. 12x, is it? No, I'm not sure. Well, it's 10x is 160. 11.5x, I think. It's near enough anyway. We get a call up. Be pretty do if we just folded, wouldn't it? We flop top set, and I think if this is one of the very rare occasions where you can flop a monster and just check because the body is so insanely dry. It's like, what do we get value from here? We maybe get one street from like pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket tens, something like that. But it's you know, you've got to give your opponent some rope, you give them a chance to bluff, give them a chance to catch up somewhat. If he's in there with pocket sevens or whatever, just give them a chance to maybe spike a seven and go broke. Who knows? But it's just the kind of thought we just, even though our range should be betting this because it's like king low, low, dry, so most of our range wants to bet. I don't give a fuck about that in these situations. We've just got the board utterly, utterly crushed, and there's just not a single bad card for us, really, unless he has the 4 5, then I guess he can make a straight. Um, so I did check our opponent bet. Let me just call, of course. Turn eight again doesn't change anything. Just check again. I like your opponent to continue bluffing if he is bluffing. If he just gives up, then we just lead the river and hope he finds a call with something. He bets 283. We just call again. River's a five. Doesn't change very much. Ace four's got there. Um, yeah, ace four's got there, and that's it really. Um, what would I like to see myself do here? It's a weird one now because he's just if he has just like been stabbing twice with like pocket ten or something like that, just for whatever reason, he's always going to check back this river. It's like what bluffs can he have? Bluffs that include a club, maybe. You know, we have a king of clubs, which you no. Know, isn't right the here nor there it's it's very very minorly relevant i guess i just think he's going to check back so much here i think i remember this hand now and i think it did lead out and i think it's a right play because he's just going to check back with so many hands and that, that we can maybe get some value from now what size would let him himself lead out? i'm going to lead out here um it doesn't make sense anyway so that's a lead really from his point of view so does size matter very much when we lead out? I mean, what would I want to lead out with here to get a call from, say, pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket nines? Around half, no, half pot seems a bit there. Uh, I don't know. 
maybe on the smaller side, maybe like four dollars, something like that. Maybe look like she's trying to buy a cheap showdown or something with who knows what. Because I just don't have many bluffs here, like ace queen of clubs, ace jack clubs, ace ten clubs, things like that. Maybe, maybe like yeah. yeah, it's a weird spot. We don't have many bluffs. We don't have many value bets. I don't really know what size to bet. Maybe we should even check. Who knows? I mean, we have just a pot size bet left. Maybe we can just fucking ship it. Yeah, uh, we'll see. So we go with six four. Yeah, which is neither here nor there. We've left three seventy six behind. Reggie. Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. I think we should just jam all bit small there. Anyway, our opponent calls and yeah, King Queen, so Yeah. Maybe if we check raise at some point we could have got it all. I think he definitely checks that back on the river though. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe we get to get a check raise on the river with versus that exact hand. Eh, who knows? Jack. Queen of Hearts, we get a loose player, pretty loose, aggressive, regular, or seems to be a regular raising under the gun. We call, which I think is perfectly reasonable with this hand. Ah, I remember this hand, I'm going to remember all these hands out when we come back to them, I guess. This guy had his 100% flop C bet for a you know, 11 out of 11. He wasn't that high at the time. I think it was like 6 out of 6, 7 out of 7. But nevertheless, um, we have a slam dunk check raise here. Which we make. He slams it in our eye. And this is where I think I made the mistake here. Um, I don't think my raise is big enough. But out of position, um, it's a pretty wet board. I would probably raise bigger than this if I had flopped a set or two pairs. I think the bet's just too small. Um, I think we need to be like at least f 4xing what he's putting. Um, I'd prefer to assume we get to at least like maybe 320, 350-ish. It might seem like it's a bit of a crossover bet, but better man than we do what fold equity and we kind of want to, you know, we don't want to commit ourselves to the hand, but it makes it easy. If we like when this happens now and he jams, it's a tough spot because we've got like 40, we need 40% equity to call. With our straight draw, we've got what, like eight outs, that's 30 odd percent equity. It's not quite getting the right price to call. We do have backdoor hearts, and there's the odd time that our jack or queen might be good too if he's in doing this with. Well, our jack or our queen, maybe not our jack and our queen. We're just going to have like say ace queen of spades or something here. Then our jack's going to be good too. Um, so I'd rather see myself a bit bigger and just like commit to being forced to call it off if he did jam. Or fold if we thought he was like his jamming range is so tight that we you know we could just we weren't getting the right price. But I think like I raised, I raised here with the intention of not folding. I should have made it bigger. We're not quite getting the right price to call if we don't think our overs are any good. Um, but I was kind of in a mood to gamble, I guess, because I did call. I don't mind the bet call, the raise call. I just think we should make it bigger. I have no issue at all with the raise call. But if we raise it bigger, we generate more fold equity. And we also just, you know, make sure that we're not making a mistake by calling it off. So, yeah. Um, don't hit the check raise. Call it off. Just wish we made it bigger. We turn an absolute shit ton of equity, which is really nice. And then we break off. And he had 10-9. Two tens against the same player we just played the pot against. This may have been before or after it. I'm not sure if these hands are chronological or not. We just call again. We flop really good for two tens. He bets. We call again some guy who's like C betting 100%, double barreling. 100% albeit over a very very small sample size so we can't be too um, too exuberant with, with abusing stats but in we, we, it's an easy check call again on the turn against somebody with these stats like 27, 23, 100% double barrel frequency and then we 
river the boat which we're going to presume is the nuts we checked him again which again i think is a good play against someone who's very very aggressive um if we didn't have this like super high we 57 woman so flop everything about him screams aggression 27 23 100 percent c bet 100 percent turn c bet 57 percent woman so flop um everything about him screams aggression i think just checking again to him here if this guy's got a jack he's going to value better if he's got better than a jack he's going to value better um if he doesn't have better than the jack then maybe he's going to check back but do we get paid on a donk bet anyway um if he has they say double barrel pocket nine so you're just being like really aggressive i mean he maybe checks that back anyway so doesn't there's that like in the last with the kings i think there was a good check good reason to donk the river um i don't think there's a good reason to donk the river here i think we should absolutely go for check raise instead we check he over bets we jam it in his eye and he folds so this is where there's a difference for me between playing snap and zoom um i probably well maybe wouldn't have taken the same line against if i'm playing snap for example and i've only got 146 hands on some there's a chance i'm going to know fuck all about them or very little about them but here we had the stats there too although they're not mega reliable they mean something you know stat i mean 100 percent c bet flop 100 percent double barrel and 57 percent one one win saw flop or be over a small sample still means something they still mean he's more aggressive than this guy who's got a similar sample size who's never c bet who's only got a 38 percent one win saw flop so they do mean something and, and the stats certainly helped us out there and helped us obviously win the absolute maximum with our hand jack 10 off suit again we call out of the big blind versus a min race from a or virtual min race from a complete unknown flop top pair easy call turn trips easy call check river allow him to continue bluffing with like eight nine nine ten all these clubs queen ten you know there's all kinds of bluffs the dude can have here he bets again and that's just about do we raise or do we just call and what does he call with that's worse i guess you could say like jack nine jack eight maybe king x calls if he's terrible um i don't think it's a spot where we can raise some value though and get tons of value ace jack or something like that i think we can definitely raise some value obviously full houses um yeah but i kind of wimped out and just called it was lucky that we did because our opponent had the jack queen. Yes, four. This definitely doesn't seem like a very Reggie time type hand. All right, we just stuck, tried to steal the blinds. We got a caller, flop top pair. I think in spots like this, like this is this hand's going to be a perfect candidate for just like check calling flop, probably check calling turn and deciding river. Um. If you mean if you see better in your ace x here, like ace four, you really are completely fucking your, your check call range up the ass, really. Um, because what, what is your check call range going to be here if you not check? I mean, you just kings, queens, jacks, that type of thing, stuff that can't really take that much heat. So I think this is like a perfect candidate for a check call. And that's what we do. Um, again, put just check call turn which we do and we river two pairs so now it's a matter of do we donk again our hands improved on the river he might check back some worse ace x like ace five ace six um he's maybe stabbed twice the 10 that's gonna check back so now do we lead here or do we check back when I mean, we could represent some misdraws i guess not too many though um mm. what do i think
if I thought my opponent was aggressive, I think a check call would easily be the best line. This guy looks relatively passive though, 28-11, small, ridiculously small sample size. I mean, if we bet, yeah, I think betting's better here, just to make sure we get calls from like ace-8, ace-9, that might check back, ace-jack. I think leading out here is better, and leading out pretty big. Let's see what I did. Ah, checked again. Our opponent virtually potted it. I mean, we just have a super easy call, I guess, and raising's kind of out of the question. Don't see any worse hand that calls. Maybe 10 7 or something like that, but just calling, I think, sensible. And our opponent had King Queen, which means our donk bet wouldn't have been paid, but that doesn't mean to say that donking still wasn't the best play. Yeah, if we could have that hand back, I think it would probably just lead the river. Just in case this guy's in there with like any ace that isn't two pairs. And checking back. Maybe then again, maybe they just bet them. Uh, I don't know. I think it's close between donking and betting. Just not folding is the line, I guess. <laughs> two queens. We squeeze to whatever that is. 14 bigs, is it? Versus a 3x of the call. <laughs> And we pick up a call. This is the guy from the last hand again. We flop the over pair. I think it's leading up big here's the, the play on this board texture. I wouldn't want to see so sometimes I don't know, like if we had got two queens it's come down say four, eight, ten rainbow or or like slightly drier board. I mean, there's just tons and tons of draws out there. I mean, this guy shouldn't have stuff like five, six, um, nine, seven, nine, six stuff like that. But they they do. They just have. They just turn up with these weird hands. Uh, there's lots of draws out there. We can get value from lots of made hands, pocket nines, pocket jacks, ten x, eight x. Which I think is just a kind of board against someone who thinks not a skilled regular. We should just go quite big. If I go less than three fifty, I'd be somewhat disappointed. <laughs> 288, too small Reggie, we need to go bigger than that I think, anyway he calls, see here's the other thing, if we'd gone slightly bigger, we would have left ourselves an easy turn job, if I'd have put an extra say dollar on my bet, there would have been 1288 in the pot now, we'd have only had 11.33, we could have just gone all in, now it's awkward, I think we should probably still just go all in anyway, um, I mean I guess we can go four, and then jam river but i think i just prefer going all in he's not going to fall to 10 he's not going to fall to draw um well he might fall to draw but if he does we don't mind that too much i guess he does indeed call river should be a brick and he just had ace 10 so goes So a regular opens from the small blind. We three x to ten x. So we three bet to ten x. He four bets us. This guy's got like a one point nine percent three bets. So fuck knows what his four betting range looks like. Um, what should we do here against someone who might? I mean, we can't take too much from the 1.9% 3 bet over 100 hands, I guess. Uh, I think here, I think jamming or calling and then getting it in on a safe flop, either's fine. We can just jam it in his face. See, if we'd put slightly more in, I'd prefer it. Uh, there's just more money we pick up when he folds. Um, he hasn't even managed to put 25 blinds in here, has he? What's he put? 24 blinds, is that? I mean, still, jamming's fine. I think jam, call, get it in a safe flop. Ooh, my two preferred lines. Folding's obviously out of the question. We call. We get a pretty good, well, say a pretty good flop. But um, safe flop, I guess we've got all we asked for. He checks. We bet. He goes all in. We're now crying our eyes out, but we almost certainly can't fold if i fold here i'll be very very disappointed with myself it doesn't matter now if he's just turned up with kings aces or a set of jacks then just fuck our lives i guess one of those things we do call deuce on the turn deuce on the river 
And he had the fact to the guy that never, or looks like he doesn't at three bit, but he often just woke up with the 5 3 and decided to take off with it versus, well, let's face it, a fucking knit. You don't really want to be taking off against knits with 5 3 of diamonds, in my opinion. Queen Queen for us, we pot versus Olympia. Pretty loose player calls out of the small blind. <laughs> And a pretty based on stats so far. Very loose aggressive player puts the squeeze on. Hmm, what do I see us doing here? I think against this guy we should just fall back get it in here, I think. Yeah. Yep. What did I do? I didn't. I just called. I seem to like calling with queens. And pretty interesting flop. Check. All in. Um, uh, call, I guess. We've got an, over, got an over pair. We've got a good shot. And we don't block diamonds. Um, it's never nice, this situation. But um, against a player with these stats, uh, it is what it is. So I re jam. He calls, which probably means we're fucked at this point. I mean, he's three bet. He's squeezed two people and gone all in for 1.25x pot. We've rejammed and this guy said, fuck you. I mean, anyway. So, yeah, queens are probably fucked here. One would imagine. We turn the straight. Running good. And we river the set, which probably isn't good. Uh, well, we beat him. Looks like we're not going to beat this dude dog given he's just shipped 30, 33 cents to us. This guy must have some kind of king in his hand. Ah yeah, just your proper, proper cooler. It was your absolute textbook cooler, wasn't it? Jack's kings versus aces. Jack's kings, queens. And yeah, the flop came down. Everyone liked it. And the kings rightfully held because the kings were the best hand. What am I missing here? Why did he get that? Am I missing something? Why is that Jack's one? A side part. What am I missing here? Let's go back. It doesn't make sense. Pre. This guy had 16. I had 54. Right. So. River. I'm probably missing something completely basic. There's a. Eight, nine, ten jacks. A straight on board that this guy's got. So he wins. Did we run it twice or something? And this not showing, maybe? I think that we pro. I'm presuming. Cause it doesn't make any sense that. Tell me what I'm missing. If I'm missing something fucking obvious, because it is quarter past one in the morning. If I'm missing something obvious here, please tell me. But, um. Why should he get this extra 25.50? I don't know. I guess we must have run it twice. And he somehow, like, made a boat or something on the second run. Don't know. Maybe I'm completely missing something. I don't think I am. He's eight. Nine, ten, Jack, Queen. So they're straight on the board. No flushes. Yeah, the, it must have been a, must have been a run it twice there. Either that or Holden manages just having a bit of a nightmare. Um, we defend Queen ten suited versus a loose aggressive players under the gun open. We flop. Pretty good. I'd like to see myself raise here. We do not. Disappointing. Should probably raise there. Turn a good shot. Ah, I remember this hand. This is another guy who had his stats weren't quite as but they're not seeing the passive here because they're not his C bet was slightly higher and his double barrel was slightly higher. I remember now at the soon as I saw the flop, I would I just said to myself, We're gonna check core flop, check raise any turn. Um 
So I hope a check raise here, unless I'm completely misremembering the hand. No, we go for the check raise, which I like. Given that at the time he looked like he was more aggressive than maybe he looks now. And then fortunately we get there on the river. Jam. And had I bricked here, when we check raise turns on these boards, and this is the river was a brick, as I said the river was a three of spades, there's not a fucking earthly chance I jam here for what it's effectively half pot on the river. I'm giving up. If my turn check raise doesn't work, if my turn check raise gets jammed on, then we have to call, of course, because we've got flush draw on a good shot. But if he calls the turn check raise and then we miss the river, so if this river's like deuce of spades, three of spades, four of spades or whatever, I'm completely giving up. But um, I'm giving up because I don't think we're going to get any folds. So if I don't think we're going to get any folds, then on bricks and, you know, checking the river, uh, sorry, checking the river, if assuming he's not going to fold some of the time at least, wouldn't make sense. So I think we just jam here now. Um... And yeah, if I had 10 9 of hearts and 3 of clubs come, would I jam then? No, I still don't think I would. I think once we get turn check raise calls and we're bluffing, giving up is usually the best play in these games because people are just fucking stationed. Once they call a turn check raise, unless they've missed the draw themselves, they're usually not folding made hands. So yeah, I like just like check raise turn here, give up, jam if we hit. It's very exploitable, but I don't think we're going to get exploited too much in these games. A jam, he snaps us off with pocket kinks. Don't hate his play, I guess, but I think he can maybe sometimes. If he has the king of clubs, maybe you can call. I don't know. Maybe you should just call anyway because it's two kings and two kings is a good hand. Um, yeah. Anyway, forget what he did. I like our line. It worked, and. You know, clearly checking when we miss would have been the best player too because he wouldn't have fought these kings if we'd put a gun to his mother's head, I don't think. Two jacks. Two callers. Tank. He ended up having 100 V people for a lot more hands than just five. He was an interesting guy. Flop the other pair. We bet. Tank raises. We call, turn to queen, we check, tank bets, we call, move as a queen, we check, tank goes all in. Now this is the interesting point of this hand in my opinion, we can't fold the flop, we turn the good shot. In he bets we'd probably need to call especially against someone who's playing 100% of his hand so far albeit only over 5 samples um, sample of 5 still means he's you know, likely not going to be a superstar I mean maybe he's just been dealt 5 primo hands who knows I mean I know subsequently that wasn't the case but I didn't know that at the time but um, we're now ahead of stuff like 8-9 well just exactly 8-9 I guess um, and if he had some random 8-3 suited, 9-3 suited, which this guy absolutely could have had given that he did turn out to be playing every single hand. I just think we've got good blockers here to that nutted stuff. I mean, if he's flopped a set, then we're dead. Of course, we're fucked. But when he might bet bets again, you know, and we hold two jacks, which blocks queen jack, blocks jack 10 for the nuts. Um, I don't know. I don't know if blocks that relevant here. We're just up against a fucking a player who's likely going to be a lunatic and we have one of the best hands we're going to have in this situation any other hand here i mean we don't have any queen x because we just fall that on the flop so this is like literally this and like aces and kings are the best hands we're going to have i just don't think we should we should fold this type of hand to this type of player if he's got us he's got us you know good for him so we call he just turned up with a random ace 10. so Last hand of the video. We oh forgot to mention at the start we've got some chests to open. So if you're still here, you're gonna be rewarded by seeing chests being open right at the end of the video. Wish I'd said that at the start. Can't be asked to go back and edit it. Never mind. We open nine six suited in the cutoff. We get called in two spots. We flop a good shot on a backdoor flush draw. We fire out a just over half pot C bet. 
and get two callers so at this point we're done unless we improve we improve to a straight which is pretty sweet we bet reasonable size maybe could have gone slightly bigger but at this point it's like gonna be we we're thinking it's gonna be hard to be caught by worse we never fold whatever we're, we're worried about we're not worried but we're worried about trying to make win a big pot from aha here not from never fold i mean it doesn't matter what we're against never fold because we can just shove if he calls and he falls we can just shove any river so it makes no difference uh maybe we could have gone slightly bigger though anyways never fold does actually fold making a complete mockery of his name and ah, ha, 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 calls board pairs river not overly concerned about that at this point he checks we go for a pretty damn big bet and just hope he's in there with bad enough to just call here with like pocket nines pocket tens maybe pocket jacks it didn't three bet that type of thing and then he ships it in our face And I wouldn't want to call this check raise against like an aggressive regular because river check raises in micro stakes no limit hold'em are just fucking so 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 nutted it's uh, it's untrue. You could find me like a really loose aggressive player at like this dude. So he was playing twenty six twenty four, sixty one percent one went so flop. I don't give a fuck. I'd, I'd pretty much fold a straight on a paired board to a river check raise versus almost any one of the micro stakes, unless it was just like a stupidly small amount left. But it would never be in that situation because if I was betting an amount where somebody could jam for like I don't know a tiny amount, I'd just put them in anyway. So we'd never be in that situation. Um, I just think it's it's annoying because we thought we had the best hand. It turns out we probably didn't have the best hand, and it, it's just a fold, and and that's what we did so that's that out of the way what are we on to next this is the graph for the day's play we played 3000 how many does it say 3626 hands and we won just short of 10 buy-ins which is pretty fucking sweet it was a it's a glorious day. We ran slightly above EV, but not much, not by much. We had a pretty good red line. All in all, yeah, can't argue. It's been a productive day. We've got some good content for the video. We made $160 nearly. And most importantly of all, we got these bad boys to open. A little bit of Jeremy Corbyn there. Didn't tell anyone in the chat today when I first put me Corbyn up as my, um, as my avatar. I got a bit of stick from from some bit from pieces of fucking raw gammon here and there but anyways not today four more chests to open i've already opened five chests today or four four or five chests so it's been chest delicious i wanted to make it go full screen but we can't let's see what the chests are gonna deliver Ooh, 37 fucking stars coins get the fucking and 44 whatever they are just boost me up a little bit as 37 stars coins you get four of them what's that 120 in rate back fucking magic oh 13 stars coins but we got money 50 fucking cents oh and what's that we got and another free roll ticket oh that was a good chest that was a fucking great chest 63 cents in rake back 94 points that just make another chest appear eventually and a free roll ticket to someone that i've already fucking got but never mind what's in this one 24 cents right back oh money 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 another fucking hell. cash in here with this rate right back out that's a dollar in actual cash rate right back now truly exciting times three just three stars coins that's not exciting more money dollar give me a dollar now just 50 cents never mind so that's one dollar fifty in rake back plus maybe maybe the hundred stars coins which is what another dollar two dollars fifty in rake back and a free roll ticket 
fucking live in the dream. Live in the fucking dream. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, any questions, comments, etc. You know where I'm at. Please let me know. And um, yeah, we'll see you again. Who knows when with who knows what. Bye bye for now.